What do you think the world might look like if we could go back and curb some of mankind's biggest mistakes before they got out of hand? For instance, how do you think New Zealand might look if the introduction of invasive species was reconsidered? Or if the world might be better if humanity collectively decided to favor the environment over large companies early on? But I'm here to tell you about a different problem, a new problem. It's a problem that no one's talking about, yet it's growing every day, and it's happening in the world of technology. But this time, we have that chance, that fleeting chance to make things right before it's too late. To preface, I think we can all agree that tech is shaping our future. It's part of our personal lives, professional lives, and social lives, and kids and adults alike are glued to their screens. All industries across the board are being redefined by modern technological innovations, such as artificial intelligence. But barriers to entry in tech are high. It's a socioeconomic issue. Those who have computers and access to quality education are those with resources to spare, while the rest are left in the dust. But I'm talking about a different problem, a problem that affects this and many others, that's closer to the heart of technology. The issue is that all innovation across technology is being run by people who look the same and think the same. And I believe the main reason for this is that in order to code, you must be an English speaker, as across the world, no matter where you go, all code is based in English. This leaves little to no room for diverse opinions and ideas. As we are systematically excluding more than five billion people from the world's population, wouldn't you think that this is a problem? So, some background on me. When I was seven, I got my first computer. Uh, like many kids at that time, I had played around with my parents' devices, so I had an idea on how to use it, but I wanted to go a step deeper. So I perused Google and YouTube, and I picked up some HTML, uh, which is a coding language for websites. Fast forward two years, I used some of these skills to work on a project called Language is Not a Barrier. Language is not a barrier explored how people understand things in their native language versus a secondary one. And it was around this time, probably because of this, that I noticed the trend I'm talking about, that all code, no matter where you go, is in English. The world's most popular languages, Python, Java, C, Ruby, you name it, have nothing but English equivalents. And pretty much every app you use, operating system you use, artificial intelligence program built into your Maps app, all of the technological advances we take for granted on a day-to-day -day life have been crafted by a select few people. This means that non-English speakers are excluded from huge opportunities, just the $88 billion market of the App Store, or the millions of tech jobs waiting to be filled. But it's not as simple as English versus non-English. It goes deeper. In many places, women are denied some of the most basic education, like math and literacy. So how can they get their hands on extras, such as English education? This widely exacerbates our already existent and prominent gender barrier in the tech world. And what about those who are living in poverty? Even if they do somehow get their hands on a computer and the internet, how can we expect them to go and find quality English education to be able to join the community? This once again widens the aforementioned socioeconomic gap. This brings barriers across the board up, which creates less, less ethnic diversity across the entirety of the tech community. And many think, and to a certain extent understand, that diversity is good in principle, that diversity is good for being diversity. But it can be much harder to appreciate why diversity is needed in a situation like this, in a community like this. A great and tangible way of understanding this is something that we've discovered over time is that the social bias and background of coders often make their way into the code they write. A great example of this is facial recognition algorithms struggling, struggling to work with black faces when they have ease with white faces. Or how for a very long time, Google would, all, would favor men over women with their hiring algorithm. Not to mention that those with first-hand experience on a problem often have the best and most nuanced solution to said problem. So if there's someone living in a non-English country with a local problem that they've been working their entire life to solve, if they don't have access to some, of the, to some of the technology we use to solve these problems, how can their idea that may solve this problem in the entirety get to light? Will instead outsiders come in and try to solve their problem for them? 
What this is doing overall is creating a community, a tech community, that does not reflect the full diversity of our population. And if we really want technology that works for all people, it needs to be created by all people. We need to open the tech community to those who don't speak English. So Richard McCulloch of Wired predicted that this problem would be solved in about 30 years. But I believe this, a solution is possible today. In fact, I've started one. So the way I went about this was take, by taking a look at a language called Python. It's the coding language we're using in this instance. And looking and creating a program that can parse through it, so look through the actual structure of it, and make changes that, in, without jeopardizing the integrity of the code. And then from there, we could just do a find and replace job. So one of the big issues with something like Google Translate is that for spoken languages, there's a lot of nuance involved. There's more than just saying, oh, OK, great, this word means this word. Great, perfect translation. It's not that simple. You need to convey the original meaning. And since languages evolved independent of each other, it's not always going to be the same word for word. But we have that privilege in technology. In coding, it's completely no nuance, which means you can do, like I said, find and replace. This word means this word, this word means this word, and create a 100% perfect translation of the keywords and built-in functions, which is how a language determines what you're trying to say. So let's take a look of what I've, at what I've created. So here we're going to be taking a look at a file called multigpu.cnn.py. This is a program made by some wizard that uses multiple GPUs to create a convergent neural network, again, wizardry. Um, so let's just take a look at this code. We, all we really need to look at here is line 39. As we can see, def convnet, this is short for define what we're going to be looking at, conversional network. So just keep in mind that line. So let's take a look at the translator. I'm going to run a file called prompt.py. We're going to select translator program. We're going to select the language we want to translate from, English, translate to, Japanese, and we're going to type the file name and press enter. And you can see it sent a message. We've translated your file. Great. So. There's now a new file in that directory called multigpu.jpn.py. So let's look in that quickly. As you can see on line 39, we can see that same line define conversional network, except this time it's in Japanese. And you can look at the background. All of the keywords and built-in functions have been translated to Japanese. So. <laughs> so this is by no means a perfect solution. I don't want anybody to walk out of here thinking, all right, great, we've found a solution, perfect. It doesn't work like that. This is very buggy. And I'm 13, and I created this over the course of six weeks. We can do much better. <laughs> like, so the tech community for years has said this problem is completely unsolvable. But like I said, I'm 13. Over the course of six weeks, I'd say in total I put in 12 hours of programming because I didn't even work on it that much. I was, able, I was able to create something that does the job decently well. So I think that it is unacceptable that such a large community with such a wealth of knowledge has decided this problem is unsolvable, when in reality it is perfectly solvable. We can do better and we must do better. We must, in, we must be able to include non-English speakers and increase the diversity of the tech community. Thank you.